One of the most common things people think about when they think of ancient China is concubines. These women and girls lived in gorgeous palaces and got a top-notch education. But how good were their lives really? How at risk of death at the hands of a jealous emperor were they? Stick around to find out. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Ming Dynasty Today, the Ming Dynasty is often described as one of the greatest eras with the most orderly government and stable society. Not just in Chinese history, but across all world history. It held Confucian values and is known for having a very orderly government. However, it also had lots of murder and infidelity. For some quick background, the Ming Dynasty lasted from 1368 to 1644. The founder of the Ming Dynasty is called the Hongwu Emperor. He began his life as a penniless monk and grew to be the most powerful warlord of all time and led the army that ran the Mongols from China. Now he is considered to be one of the most influential men in Chinese history. Beijing became the capital during this time, and it is still the capital today. It's not like the capital was just moved from one location to another. Beijing was a brand new city made by the Yongle Emperor. At its heart was a new palace called the Forbidden City. In addition to new cities being built up from the ground, there were a lot of refurbishments to the Great Wall during this time as well. Art also flourished. There was lots of art such as porcelain, painting, and textiles, not just for the elite, but for the common people as well. This tells us that it was a generally prosperous time. The market for art drops when society is suffering. What are concubines? One law during the Ming Dynasty said that a man was allowed to take a second wife if he did not have a son by the age of 40. The caveat was that his first wife got to select the new bride. Taking on a concubine or consort was seen as the same thing as taking a wife. Courtesans, on the other hand, were like high-class prostitutes and therefore were not seen as wives. This law was for the everyday man. Emperors and other wealthy men were a different story. They were allowed to have as many wives as they could afford, and some emperors had as many as 10,000 concubines and consorts. Obviously, that is way too many for one man to ever sleep with. In reality, he probably slept with a few dozen over his lifetime. The other women were just there to give the emperor options and to be a way to show off his wealth. So where did these thousands of women come from? Well, most concubines were kidnapped from their homes or given as gifts by men trying to gain favor with the emperor or foreign dignitaries. Likewise, the emperor could also gift one of his concubines to someone else. This was pretty much her only way out of the palace. Despite being forced to move away from family, it was a very high honor for a family if their daughter was made a concubine. Life in the Palace There were quite a few different levels of concubine in the Ming court. There were strict policies and internal politics within the women's court. At the top was the empress. There was only ever one empress at a time, and she was in charge of the women's court. This was usually a lifelong position, but there were occasions when the empress fell out of favor with the emperor and was demoted to a lower level or executed. Below the empress was the imperial honorable consort and the two honorable consorts. The fourth level of power was made of four consorts. The fifth level was called consort in ordinary, and there were six women at this level. Below them were the honorable ladies, then the ladies in waiting, and at the bottom were the responders. These bottom three levels could have any number of women in them. Becoming a concubine wasn't all bad. There were definite upsides. They would be given an education and they lived in relative luxury compared to women outside of the palace. On the downside though, concubines could never leave the palace. In fact, the only time they were allowed to leave the women's quarters was if the emperor summoned them to his chambers. Even if they were allowed to leave, Foot binding was a very common practice at this time, meaning that walking was very difficult. So they would often be carried naked to their destination. They also weren't allowed to communicate with the outside world, not even their families. They could not send mail to anyone and weren't even allowed to communicate with doctors when they were sick. Instead, a eunuch would take careful notes of a concubine's illness or injury and deliver the notes to a doctor. He would then take the remedy or advice back to the woman in the palace. Specific Atrocities 
The mistreatment of concubines during the Ming Dynasty starts at the very beginning with the Hongwu Emperor. He was just as brutal behind closed doors as he was on the battlefield. He tortured his concubines, and his jealousy led him to control every little thing in their lives, even after his death. He was so jealous that when he died, he didn't want anyone else to ever be with his wives. So he made sure that all of his concubines were either killed, buried alive, or forced to commit suicide. This is a tradition that future emperors continued. Thankfully, this was outlawed in 1464 by the Jingtang Emperor. If a concubine was found to have slept with anyone else, she would be forced to commit suicide. It is rumored that this happened to a woman in 1421. One of the emperor's favorite concubines was rumored to have had an affair with a court eunuch. Even just rumors were enough to warrant her death. Everyone else in the palace was simply told that she was poisoned. However, everyone else that knew about the alleged affair was also killed, including 2,800 women and girls, some as young as 12 years old, from his harem. They were executed by slicing, which is a slow and very painful death, where body parts are slowly and methodically removed. The official court records don't mention this slaughter, but other accounts from the time do. One of these accounts was written by another concubine. She was also killed shortly after. Another emperor, Zheng Doa, had so many concubines that it is said that there weren't enough rooms for them all and that some of them even starved to death because there wasn't enough food to go around. On top of the many, many concubines in his harem, Zhang Doa would sneak out into the city disguised as an ordinary citizen and would visit the brothels. Talk about a high sex drive. His successor, Jia Zhang, believed that the key to eternal life lay in the menstrual blood of virgins. Throughout his reign, he had thousands of girls taken from their homes and brought to his palace to be harvested. While they were there, the girls were given a strict diet to keep them pure. This consisted of mulberries and dew. Many of the girls died from starvation because of this restrictive diet. Eventually, a group of the concubines had had enough of this and staged a plot to assassinate him. One night, when the emperor was in his favorite concubine's rooms, she had all of her attendants leave. Then, when he was alone, the woman struck. One woman tried to strangle him with a ribbon from her hair. When this didn't work, they tried to use a silk curtain, but they didn't use the right kind of knot to make a noose, and this failed too. One of the conspirators got cold feet, though, and told the empress of the assassination plans. She ordered that the women be put to death by slicing and that their families be killed too. Though he was unconscious for a while, the emperor did survive this. On top of all these terrible events, there was the very high chance that the women were not attracted to the man they were obligated to sleep with. It didn't matter if they wanted to have sex with him or not, though. If the emperor wanted a particular woman or girl, she had no choice but to do it. Polygamy was clearly a very common thing in ancient China, but especially so during the Ming Dynasty. Nearly every Chinese emperor had concubines and multiple wives to ensure he had a son and heir. There were a few emperors throughout history that were monogamous, though, but they were very much in the minority. Do you think these strict rules and the risk of execution would be worth living in the lavish palace? Let us know down in the comments, and then be sure to subscribe for more.